Hi, I'm Anita Kozan. Welcome to Bi Cities, the show by, for, and about the bisexual community, the bi plus community, our friends and allies. And as my, my co host, Marge Charmley, always says, the longest running show on bisexuality in the history of the world. I'm sorry that Marge is out sick for our filming this month and is not able to be here, but she wanted to join me in first, before we get to our guests this evening, in saying how sad we are here at Bi Cities, our whole crew, at the loss, the sudden death of John Townsend. John has been a friend to the bi community, to the trans community, to the GLBT community in general since before he joined Lavender Magazine in 1995. An amazing, gentle man who did not mince words, but was, had such a kind heart, so giving to the community, and just an outstanding writer of reviews of, of mainly of theater, but of other special events. He is missed. He, will, he is missed already by so many of us and will be missed forevermore. Uh, I will mention uh, a little bit more at the beginning of our other show filmed this month. So I invite you to check out uh, Lavender Magazine for their outstanding uh, uh, article by Chris Tarbox uh, discussing John Townsend's uh, career. May you rest in peace, John. You are loved by us all. Well, our guest tonight is somebody that I keep saying when I've been reading about him, how did I not know about this man? <laughs> He's just phenomenal. His name is Zalor Stout, and he is originally from California, but we are proud to have him be a Minnesotan since he moved here in uh, 2007. So Zaylor is an attorney, he is an activist, particularly not just the G and the L, but particularly for those of us for the bisexual plus community and for the transgender community. And Zaylor has just published an amazing tour de force book that we're gonna have him show you. So Zaylor Stout, welcome to Bi Cities. I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. This is great. So, California to Minnesota. Now, how could that happen? That's always the first question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leave, a Minnesotan, I gotta ask it. Who would leave the warmth, right? <laughs> um, I actually grew up um, in Anaheim, about a mile away from Disneyland. But what brought me here, I actually came out for, for work. So I was doing uh, sexual harassment prevention training for a client, a national. What, what kind of? Oh, sexual harassment prevention training. Prevention training. Correct, yeah. So making sure members of management teams know what conduct rises to the level of sexual harassment doesn't, and then so that they can ensure that their workplaces are fair and safe for their employees. And um, so I had the lucky honor of being selected to come to Minnesota in February. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, <laughs> poor man. I'd never experienced a winter before, so I had my summer, my summer suit, I didn't have a beanie, I didn't have gloves, I didn't have anything, and they took mercy on me. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I had a really good friend here, and he uh, knew I was applying for law schools, and he encouraged me to tour the law schools here, and then at the end of the process, I ended up loving St. Thomas and chose to come here for law school. For heaven's sakes. Well, the Tommies were very lucky to have you. I, I, it was an amazing experience, absolutely. So, um, you obviously, you were already working in, uh, in, in what I would consider a profession of activism in terms of helping uh, educate the community. Where, where did that come from? Um, as it relates to the LGBT activism, would you say? Mm -hmm. um, well, I've always been involved in regards to the community, but once I got here, um, especially um, moving to St. Louis Park, 
Uh, it would have been after uh, the 2016 election and not necessarily being all that happy in regards to the results and seeing um, some of the attacks that were happening in regards to the rolling back of protections and rights for uh, the LGBTQIA plus community and um, meeting a family in St. Louis Park that had a transgender kid and, and hearing their own personal story in regards to what they had to go through with the school district um, in regards to providing you know, basic protections um, for, for their kid. And um, knowing that I had a particular skill set that could be used in regards to advocating for change. And so that's what I ended up doing in St. Louis Park. I worked with the Allies of St. Louis Park, which was a social justice activist group that started right after the election. The and Allies yes, of the St. Allies Louis Park. of St. Louis Park. Yep, Facebook group started by Susan Neese. Love you, Susan. <laughs> she started the group and um, really focusing on social justice ac ac access across the board. So not just LGBT, um, but also for immigrants and just anything and everything um, as it relates to making sure that those who are the most marginalized within our community had somebody that was there speaking on their behalf. So. Uh, ended up working with them um, as well as the parents and students and we were able to get St. Louis Park to pass the gender inclusion policy so it was the first suburb in the state of Minnesota to have a gender inclusion policy passed. Now those of us who have worked in the schools or worked in advocacy know what that means but there are people we have a wide range of people who watch mm -hmm. the show so tell us what that means a gender inclusion policy. Well, it would be a, it's a policy that's on the books in regards to what the school is supposed to be doing in regards to providing students with the opportunity to self-identify, making sure that the proper names are used, and it's not just by um, uh, their their home school te or homeroom teachers, but mainly becomes an issue sometimes when you have a substitute teacher, let's mm -hmm. say, and then they get a, a quick role, and then that role may have the student's dead name that's not used anymore. Um, there have been situations where, you know, the dead name has been printed in um, the yearbook, right? And so it's just, it, and what the school is supposed to do in regards to, you know, um, restrooms and locker rooms. Uh, the state already has uh, protocols in regards to sports, you know, um, which team sports students are able to participate in. But it, it, it provides um, accountability for teachers and accountability for administrators, but then also providing education, because that's a big area that was lacking as well. That there, that there wasn't um, you know, money and resources put aside to ensure that faculty and staff are properly trained in regards to how to make students feel welcome in the schools. You were telling me in our pre-recording interview about a toolkit. Yes. So how, who, who put that together and, and how, how did that come about? I always forget the acronym, but it's oh. like SSTAC. So it's, a, it's the state of Minnesota has this safety, um, safety group that, that meets um, and they had been wrangling with this toolkit for a couple years. And um, unfortunately, a lot of the school districts were using that as a crutch to say, well, we don't have to pass a gender inclusion policy because we don't have any guidance from the state in regards to what we should be doing. And so we then went and, 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 and advocated for the passing of the toolkit and got the toolkit passed. So that was just another resource where they've done all the heavy lifting in regards to sample language and, and, and issues and questions that have already been thoroughly addressed by the state, um, by the state agency for then school districts to be able to wrangle and use in, in the drafting of their own gender inclusion policies. So the, the toolkit is not some, did, they don't have to buy it? No, no, it's free. It's, it's readily available for everybody. And, and, and the state can't mandate, unfortunately, for um, the passage of gender inclusion policies at the school district level. So that's why each school district kind of has to do it on its own. But, uh, but they, each school district can contact the state of Minnesota. It's available online. It's available online. Available online. Wow. Yeah, you can even get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a mouse click away. And it's, it's wow. information that's readily, readily oh, available. Oh, that's so. wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, I've got so many notes about things that you've done. <laughs> I hope that I don't, don't jump around too much because I want to have enough time to, to ha let you talk about the book. But you must, one of the things I saw about you is that you won a contest of Lavender Magazine sponsored contest to be on the cover 
yes. of Lavender Magazine Pride Guide. Yes. And also, you want to cruise mm -hmm. as well. So. I have to know, how did you do this? What did you have to do in order to uh, <laughs> convince everybody that uh, you were the person who should be on the cover? Well, it, it was during um, May of 2018, uh -huh. and uh, my good friend Barry Lovitz uh, convinced me to enter the contest. So it's all Barry's fault. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had to come up with a video just indicating, you know, um, work that I've done in regards to advancing, you know, access and equity, equ equity and equality for the LGBTQIA plus community. And so I highlighted the fact that I was on the Reclaim board and did a lot of work in regards to Quorum, which is our LGBT Chamber of Commerce. I spoke in regards to the gender inclusion policy and the toolkit um, and the fact that I was writing an LGBT history book <laughs> and that was going to be out uh, sometime soon. And uh, submitted the video and made it from the the prelims to the finals, and mine was the one that was selected, so I got to be on the cover of Lavender Magazine in June of 2018. And did you tell me, too, that there was voting? Yes, yep. So people By went whom? on. Anybody and everybody. They got to go online to the Lavender Magazine uh, website and submit their votes. And uh, so this was actually, the, um, that was the first year that Lavender Magazine had that contest, and this past year, uh, Beth Mejia won, so she, she was on the cover. Um, and she won her cruise as well. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. And you've been so busy with this book. Yes. When did you finally get to take a cruise? So I went with my partner at the end of September, beginning of October of this year. So we ended up having a, going on an 11 day cruise. <gasps> five ports in the Caribbean, so it was in the amazing. the Caribbean. So that's why I have a great tan. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it, it will fade, believe me. I know, me. <laughs> it's so sad. You've it's lived so here sad. now. You, I, <laughs> you're, yes. you're, you're kind of like a, a native at this point. True, that, I've, uh, I've done know, my share of winners. Twelve winners, you know. <laughs> you, got your, you got your stripes, definitely. True. Well, let's talk about this amazing book. First of all, would you hold it up, please, because the camera can zoom in. It's go. so beautiful. I just, I just love the cover. My... Uh, my kudos to the uh, to the uh, the artist or artists who produced it because it's I love it. Let's 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 hear the long version. From from whence did this come? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually on a road trip. I've done many road trips from California and Minnesota and back and forth. And um, one of my road trips, um, it was it was. 2012, it was uh, tumultuous times, as I would say. Uh, California was still wrangling in regards to um, whether LGBT folks could get married there. Yeah. It had passed, and then it was in the courts. Um, Minnesota had just um, passed, um, had just, you know, um, defeated the, the marriage amendment here. And each time I crossed over a different state line, I would think to myself, well, what relevance does this state have to LGBT history? What relevance does this state have to LGBT history? I got to Wyoming, and of course I thought about Matthew Shepard. Yeah. And I thought, hey, if I wanted to leave flowers where he was tied up to that fence, is this information that's readily available? And I tried to find information in regards to where it was, and it wasn't. And so then I thought, you know, there should be a road trip guide <clears throat> for LGBT folks. And that was the idea that I had back then. Um, then fast forward to 2017, when I spoke at the National Coming Out Day luncheon that we have here in October of every year, and I got to meet Judy Shepard and Dennis Shepard there. And I realized that they, for 19 years, they had been, re been reliving the worst day of their life every single day for me and my community. And so I thought to myself, I need to do more, right? If they, this is what they can do and this is what, they're, you know, what their lives, what they're putting out, out there for us. I need to do more. And so I remembered I had the book idea. I met with a really good friend, Dara Beavis, of Wising Creative Publishing. And within two weeks, she said, this is an amazing book idea. Let's do this. And within a month, I started writing. And here we are, two years later. Now, I know that you did not visit all 50 states and mm, gather this information. No. How were you able to bring all this information together? Well, it took a ton of research, and I knew that I wouldn't be able to do it on my own, especially given the fact that, you know, my day job, I'm an attorney, right? Yeah. And so I actually hired an army of queer youth, is what I would say. And um, so there's a bunch of LGBT 
folks that I hired uh, that helped do some of the preliminary research. So um, I like to say it's, it's a community project, right? And so they did the original research and then I would go through and, and take a look at the research that was provided for any given state and then look at it from my, from my um, you know, equity and diversity lens to make sure that um, it's as diverse as, as I know the community that we have. So, you know, there was some research that came back and I would say, where are the lesbians? I know we have lesbians from Montana, got to go back and do some more research. Mm -hmm. And um, if the researcher wasn't able to find any, then I would go then and do my own research. And I was really able to find, you know, representations of what I would think is, you know, hopefully every swath of the community that we have. And so uh, that's where we're at. Well, I want to let the, uh, uh, the viewers see that, you know, because sometimes it, it could be like a history book. We all have <laughs> seen history books, you know, Boring. where it's dense <laughs> paragraph after paragraph, and that he has organized it into people, places, and... Queer facts. Queer facts. So we have pages, you know, with... I, I, Oh, North Carolina, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go there in a couple of months. So <laughs> See, I'm, I'm glad to know that there are queers there, not just me, that there'll be more people there. So um, it's just, to me, it's the kind of book where, oh, let's, let's open up to Minnesota, which is, I'm gonna just turn the 213. book. 213, so I have that one committed to memory already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it that, of course I wanted to go right to Minnesota when I first saw the book. And, and Zaylor said, yeah, that's what everybody does <laughs> in Minnesota. We want to see ourselves. And so, you know, the, the people, and I, I loved seeing, and Anne Bancroft, it's in, I guess it's, that we've got so much light that I'm sorry that, that you can't really see the pages uh, um, very distinctly, but uh, Margaret uh, Sudich, did I say that name right? Chudich. Chudich. I always say it wrong too. Okay. I'm embarrassed. My apologies. Um, and uh, Anne Bancroft, and, and just we have so many people that we can really be proud of in our state and, and events. And, and the Bisexual Organizing Project is in there. I didn't read carefully to see if Bi Cities is mentioned, but you know, we still have a ways to go for all Correct. of Correct. There's always future updates. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, this is like literally hot off the press, which I think is amazing that uh, we met just at this perfect, uh, perfect time in uh, Zaylor's uh, presentation of this book. So tell us about what's happened in the last last couple of months here with this publicing. Well, wow. there's there's been a lot. I'm I'm so I'm a board member of Quorum, which is the Chamber of Commerce locally. So um, I'm I'm also involved and active in the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. And um, so while I was on the cruise, I get an email from my mentor over at Bristol Myers Squibb, and he said, we want 150 of your books for an event that we're having in October. And it was a few days after the book was supposed to be finished printing. And I was like, well, if you can get the book from point A to point B in three days, that's a lot of books. And um, they arranged all of it, and so I ended up having my first book signing in Atlanta during Pride. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> fantastic. Wow. And, and um, yesterday, we just had their, our, our, our formal book launch um, here in Minneapolis. So the book's already sold out. So I had my first thousand copies printed, all sold out. So I have my next thousand copies arriving the first week of December. I was going to say, you know, with the holidays coming up, can't miss that. That's, that's perfect timing again. So if someone wants to get a, a copy on December, when do they drop? December 5th. December 5th, <laughs> okay. Where should people go? Um, www.gay50states.com. So it's gay50states.com. Gay50states.com. Yes. All right. Um, we have about uh, seven minutes left. And I know that you do so many things. I wanted to ask you about you know, your uh, activism, particularly on behalf of the bisexual and transgender communities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of, the, one of the difficult parts um, about the community, the LGBTQI plus community is, is 
is the hierarchy that's present, and that um, you know sometimes, and I and I said this actually in my National Coming Out Day speech, is that it shouldn't be harder to come out as bisexual or transgender to your gay and lesbian friends as it is to come out as straight as as gay or lesbian to your straight friends, and um, it's it that's always been present and a struggle, it seems, um, and you know people are very very. It, you know, it rolls off your tongue, LGBT, right? Um, but it's surprising how many individuals within our community don't know anybody that's bisexual, or don't know somebody that's transgender, or, or don't know this, or don't know or necessarily care about advocating for them and, and the struggles that, that individuals have to go through if they are bi or trans, right? And so one of my focuses and goals is trying to hope bring bring more visibility to this topic and have more dialogue and discussion from individuals from within our community. Um, because the, the example that I give is, you know, once marriage equality happens, a lot of folks were like, okay, we're good, mm -hmm. we're done. And there's still a lot to be done. Yeah. And, and as you can see with, you know, trans women of color, I mean, that was one of the more shocking things that I learned throughout the research for this book was the sheer number of trans women of color that have been killed. Um, and you know, it was it was so overwhelming when I was doing the research. There was a couple of weeks that I just had to stop doing research and stop working on the book because it was just too much with all these stories, um, and just reading each and every one of these stories, and you end up finding this mantra. So, um, hopefully, working on making sure that we as a community come together more and advocate for each other more, because you know, if we're not going to have each other's back as members of the community, who else are we going to be turning to? As a person of color. How has this been just uh, identifying as someone who is bisexual? How, 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 have, how have you handled the coming out process? <sighs> well, um, you know, it's, there's struggles all the time where you have individuals in your family and it, sometimes it takes time for them to accept you. Um, I've never had any problems with any of my siblings, <laughs> so that's cool. amazing and great. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, it's, you know, I think I'm fortunate that I grew up in an area, even though I grew up in Orange County, um, I always felt safe there. Um, and I was always felt like I was able to be myself and be, you know, be me. And, and, and that happened to be somebody that, that was bi. And, um, but that's not necessarily the life experience of everybody. And so part of writing the book as well was, you know, thinking about those folks who are, live in red states or red counties and, and letting them know that, you know, our community has been here since our country's founding. We've had all made significant contributions towards, us, towards our country and our history and, um, and making sure that people are aware of that and showcasing that. Especially, you know, hear folks saying, well, this transgender thing is a trend. Uh -huh. Not at all. Yeah. Right? We have transgender folks fighting in the Revolutionary War. So way it's in the book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which reminds me of what you had handwritten inside the book. LGBTQI plus history is American history. Our history is American history. This that and you know, the thank you for writing that in there. But also, I mean, just hearing like there was somebody who was transgender fighting in the Revolutionary War. Oh my right. gosh! You know, right. Just all the, the now, not that I didn't want to read it before, <laughs> but what state? What state? <laughs> You're gonna find it. You're gonna be looking for that one <laughs> queer fact. Perfect. I will. I will. I will. Um, got uh, uh, three minutes. What? What? Uh, what? You're passionate about a lot of things. What's exciting you about as you're looking toward 2020 and years beyond? Are you thinking about certain things that you want to work toward? Yes. So uh, one of my next goals is, is going to be um, advocating for the teaching of LGBT history in schools. So there's currently only four states that require the teaching of LGBT history in schools, and Minnesota's not one of them. So uh, I'll, I'll start in the Midwest and then work my way out. But um, I think it's important for, that for our history to be shared. Um, here's an example. In regards to me being, a, being black, I did not learn black history in school. I learned um, a little bit about Martin Luther King, a little bit about uh, slavery, and then that's it. So I ended up learning about my black history from my parents and my family. 
And when you think about LGBT kids or queer kids, they're not raised in queer homes. So where is it that they're going to learn their history? And so, you know, it's, a, it's our responsibility as members of the community to provide those resources to them. So what I'm trying to do is get 7,525 books donated to LGBT-focused nonprofits that work with kids in every single state so that this is a resource that's available to them so they don't feel alone because a lot of us did feel like we were alone when we were growing up and that there was nobody else like us. And, and hopefully this resource will be able to show them they're part of an amazing legacy. Well, you, I'm, I'm so proud to call you a Minnesotan. <laughs> you, as great as this state is in a number of areas in terms of leading in the country, I am thrilled that you are here and that, that you have done so much with your life already. You know, there's a saying, one person can only do so much, mm -hmm. and there's a button that I have where the only has a line through it. One person can do so much. I like that. And you are doing it along with all the researchers and all the people, the allies and all the, all the friends and family who support you, mm -hmm. but you are a leader who is bringing so much to our community, and I mean that globally, to the community. So I thank you so much for all of your work, for being a guest on our show this evening. And uh, I am excited to see what the future is going to hold. I know that people will, and I wanted to pronounce your name correctly, it's Zaylor, so that we, uh, uh, when people um, look you up on the internet, Zaylor, Z-A-Y-L-O-R-E, Stout, that people can see your fine work. I'm the only one. You're the only <laughs> one. Well, please join me in looking at our main camera and giving our signature by cities goodbye. Bye for now. Bye for now.